All right, let me see. How come I'm not seeing? Wait, what's going on? Come on, computer. Okay, there it is. It's working. Okay. All right. Welcome to Time Warp Art. Ren here, Waggle Fingers. <laughs> Today we are going to be making a book. This is something that I made years ago before I even met any of you guys. Um, and I forgot all about it until I've been watching jelly print videos and watching um, Brigitte Coopson. And uh, she has some wonderful videos. You guys are going to have to go watch her. She has some wonderful videos, total inspiration. Um, it's, it's amazing some of the things she does. So, uh, Birgit Cooper, um, it's B I R G I T Coopson, K O O P S E N. Okay. Um, I'm going to put this video up on YouTube, uh, per, crossing our fingers, and hopefully the technical gods will let us do that. Uh, so I will put that, um, her name and her uh, YouTube channel in the description box down there. Okay, so uh, let me show you what's on the desk. This is what we're going to be using today. I'm going to show you these momentarily. For the moment, I'm going to let them float around over here. Um, I have been using two jelly plates, people. Two at once. Um, jelly plate number one is on the plexi. This is the original. Okay. Jelly plate number two is on my glass cookie cu um, cutting mat. So that we're not going to be actually jellying today. We're going to use the jelly prints. But I have been a jelly printing fool, let me tell you. I have so much fun with this. Oh, geez. <laughs> I can't tell you. Um, this is my Brayer Corral. I finally had to do something. I mean, these things were all over the desk and they were just falling and, and everything. So I have a Brayer Corral. This is a, a like a food container. Uh, Tray. and the food doesn't actually get cooked because it's all wrapped up and you stick it in the microwave in here but you know it's um yeah <laughs> yes the second one was crusty yes it was <laughs> uh, but I, i'm i have so many things to show you guys i don't know what we're going to get to today but we're going to do the book first after i do a little show and tell to warm up the muse although she's raring to go all right, let me put these guys back over here where they belong on the side. Okay, so I also have a tray. I got out um, some of my favorite stamps of the moment. And these are, scoot that one down. I don't like them to be wonky because they get messed up. Okay, so um, yeah, some of my favorite um, stencils and uh, some of them I used, some of them I didn't. I just grabbed some out. I flipped through my book. My book looks like this. When you want the magnet to stick, it doesn't stick. When you want, doesn't, don't want it to stick, it sticks. So here's my book. Okay, so here's my, I just flipped through and, oh, I like this one and pull it out. And, oh, I like this one and pull it out. And it, you know, they're not in any particular order. They're just in here. And I've got, you know, tons of stencils, um, some I've made, um, just other things, texture. This is a, a piece of a, the gutter cover outside. Um, yeah, it was a piece left, so I snagged it. Uh, some stencils that Jean had made me. Um, and here is my Tim Holtz stash, that baggie. And then some paper uh, cuttings from the die cut machine. So there's all kinds of, see, it's fluffy. <laughs> but it's easy, easy to get to. A regular notebook for my small stencils was just, at, you know, getting out of hand. So I just uh, did the baggy thing. That was much easier. And of course, all my larger stencils are behind me. They now have a cubby to sit in since I have taken down the other camera setup. Um, which was an easel and it was taking up some room on the counter over there. So now I've got room 
to put all of my 12 by 12 stencils and my 9 by 12 stencils back there in separate um, plastic envelopes. And so they're all ready to go. Um, these are, yeah, these are some of my favorites um, at the moment. And I'm, go I'm going to be working on my spring 6x6 six six, um, challenge page. And so I got out some birds. And this says tweet. And this one says something. I forget what it is. I can't read it anyway. Uh, it's too clean. I can't read it. I don't have any ink on it. Okay. So anyway, that's sitting out here. I'll put that on top of the jelly plates for right now. I got some new toys. Okay, I don't even know if you guys can see these. Um, these are the little mini gel. Yeah, the mini gel plates. There, there's a round one, a triangle, and a square. And then this one is the hexagon. I don't know if y'all can even see these. Hexagon, an oval, and a rectangle. So I will be playing with these. That's going to be fun. But those are new. That's just my second 8x10 jelly plate. I've also got some um, other stamps that I enjoy using. These are mostly dilutions. There's a Dina Wakeley in there. And then, too, I've also got them kind of mixed up on, on the sheets. So they're not all, all those I took off and put on the tray, but they're not all... Um, in the correct place. I just got as many on here as I could. See, there's some borders. But I plan to um, work on some art journal pages at some point today. I don't know if we'll get to it on camera, but at some point. So I've got that behind me. I got some new paint. Okay. I got a bigger corral. I've had these, but these are new paints. I've, I was sorely lacking in bright colors because I had used them all and I had to um, toss them because they got, you know, dry and yucky. So, you know, bah. Anyway, um, so I have new paints and I've been playing with all the nice bright colors and I organized my, um, here's what's left of my tubes of Liquitex Basics. Um, I got one of the sample sets where it had a whole, all these colors in it. This is what's left. Okay, so I organized that, and this there's a little uh, drawer tower over there. You know, you get these things at Walmart, so it's over there. Anyway, these go in there when I'm not using them. At the moment, they're over here on a stool. So, and I've got oh, I've got a cool technique to show you, but I'm not going to show you right now because we need to get to the book. Okay. So now I totally made these years and years ago uh, when I first started journaling, like 2006. Um, I think, I, I can't remember if I picked it up off YouTube or at one of the meetings I was going to um, in the, um, there were, um, what is it? Yahoo groups, Yahoo groups. Yeah, uh, was a big thing before YouTube um, took over the world. Um, <laughs> yeah, everybody was in Yahoo groups. And so, um, it's like, well, I don't know if it was before YouTube, but it was before I had YouTube burst into my world big time. Anyway, so, um, here is my little sample book. Um, these are some things that are going in there. Oh, these trays, guys. I want to tell you about these trays real quick. Uh, there's a set of 12 on Amazon. They're 10 by 14. They're light. They stack. Okay, so I can put projects, see how flat, I can put, stack them on top of each other for the projects. This is the um, drips and splats. See, it just needs to be finished and assembled. It's, it's there. It's just the six by six. It's not done yet. Spring is in my head. This one is already on the paper. So anyway, or they can be, you know, crossed and stacked. I love these things. Um, they are perfect for organizing your small projects or for a page worth of um, collage elements. Okay. So that's, that's what I've been doing with these. I love these things. If you want the link, I'll tweet it. If you t if remind me. Okay. All right. Uh, let me see. Okay. So the book, let me get down to the book. Okay. Let me set this over here. Okay. Here's the book. Now I'm calling this the back to back book and there's a reason for that. Okay. 
um, when I open this, you'll you'll see. Okay, this is not the cover. This is the inside of the book. Okay, this is the inside, and I will give y'all tips on how to get the papers cut and everything. So when you flip through it. And a lot of you will be happy to know there is no sewing. Looks like Kathy's already got that, or Karen's got that under control. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I'll try to remember to, to tweet the link for that. Maybe I'll, I'll put it below the, the video here in, in YouTube. That'd be good, too. But this is just using scrapbook paper. Okay, so I'm still flipping. And have you noticed anything? I'm still flipping. Have you noticed anything? <laughs> okay, and there's the end. And you know, that's blank. Now, what you do is then you take your covers and you'll put those on separately. So then you'll have your covers. Okay, so what I've done is taken a full sheet of cardstock, eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Okay, let me get centered here and cut it in half. Now, what we're going to do with these, this is like an A, okay, an A5. Okay, hold on, let me get my cheat sheet. <laughs> I'm trying to learn because all these videos have A5, A6. I'm like, what? Okay, so here in the States, what we use is a standard eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. This is as close to an A4 as you can get. Okay, so the full sheet is A4. If you fold that in half, you have an A5, which is five and a half by eight and a half. Okay, if you fold this in half, you have an A6, four and a quarter by five and a half. That's the size of our book. Okay, it's an A6, close to an A6. We're going to call it that. Okay, so cool, right? Okay, there is no sewing. You don't need a ruler, <clears throat> Janet. <laughs> you do need a cutting implement. So whether you use a slide paper cutter or a guillotine paper cutter, which is my personal favorite, use the same cutter for your, your project. Do not switch rulers. Do not switch paper cutters. Use the same tools for your project. If you don't, you're going to end up with some pages being a little bit smaller than the others or some a little bit bigger than the others, right? Yeah, so you want to use the same tools, and this applies to any project you make. You want to use the same cutter and the same ruler. <laughs> yeah, now remember there is a slight delay in the video, and uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, I am talking to a live audience. They're in the chat room over there. I can see all their text. And if I start laughing, you'll know that I'm actually talking to somebody and not just laughing at myself. Okay, so let me move my little cheat sheet. That was, I had to do that because I kept forgetting. Okay, anyway, so you want to get as many of the same size papers as you can and start jelly printing, all right? Or cut papers you already have, but just remember, use the same paper cutter. Okay, all right, so... Okay, what did I do with the prints? Oh, here they are. <laughs> okay, now we'll bring out the fun part. Okay, I have been jelly printing like crazy. And no, I have not turned the camera on for most of it. Um, sometimes you just go and not want to worry about the technology. You just want to do, okay? Yeah, so. Um, yeah, so if you can see, here is the book. All right, now, what you do with each of your papers, okay, let me go through these real quick. This is a leftover from a project that I took apart. <clears throat> Was it Kathy or the King project? Um, okay, so I'm gonna just go through these really quickly. 
Um, I laid these out on the bed and took a picture. Oh, let me see. What did I do with the picture? Let me get that. That is, it's fun. So I laid out 30 prints. And, oh, yeah, here you go. So I laid them out on the bed. Not a real good picture, but you can see all the colors. Okay. I didn't realize I had quite so much orange and green, but that's okay. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> Just put them together the way you want to. Okay, so uh, let me flip through them real quick. Um, this is a grunge, kind of a grunge print. Okay. I'll just flip through them. You can see where I use textures. This doesn't have any textures, but it's got cool colors. And you can barely see that. But there's some textures here, some stencils, and also from foam stamps I made. That was kind of a happy accident, that one. This one didn't come out. I have a habit of using too much paint, so I have to watch that. Yes, they're on just regular cardstock. Yes. The cardstock I use is the Nina. Okay, hold on. The Nina Exact, 110 pound, that's what I was using. Okay. Yeah, you can see the stencils and the stamps and the uh, texture plates. And this is a boo-boo page, but I'm going to fix it. <laughs> and you can see the stencils here. Some of these you can see real good and some you can't. It just depended on, you know, if I had too much paint or not. I'm still learning. I mean, this is a learning process, right? So, and this one, oops, I get it now, get it back here. This one is on gray cardstock uh, because when I was plating, I ran out of white. I had to order a new package of white cardstock. So, um, what I did was I did the whole 8 by 10 and then I just cut it. You know, I'll do something with the edges. I'm not worried. This is more or less a cleanup print. That came out kind of cool because it got some of the grunge from the previous one. And there again, too much paint. You see how it kind of swirls? Yeah, so I have too much paint. So I'm learning, you know, and the I had too much paint, so the stencil part didn't really come out very well. Um, this one was a total cleanup. Um, that was kind of fun. So it kind of looks like a mountain range to me or a lake, you know, with the, with the snow in the mountains. That's what that looks like to me. That's going to be fun. I'm just going to add pen work to that one, I think. And here you can see the stencils and the, the plates really well. And this was from the 5x7. I did not get it centered. Oh, well. <laughs> I will work with that. Okay. Too much paint again. This one came out really well. Okay. I got 100% on this one. Yay. <laughs> There's the other half of the grunge one. Oh, I was real happy with this one. And you can see the texture plates on that really well. This one was a case of too much paint. So I had to um, kind of dip it into the, the plate to, you know, see how that went. But that's okay. And this was another one of the boo-boo pages where I jelly printed um, a cleanup on the edges. So, I mean, you can do just about anything whatever pops into your head you know just just take care of it so okay so they're not in any particular order I just as I picked them up well they were laid out on the bed in, in color order and then I took their picture and then I when I picked them up I just randomly picked a bunch of them up and there are 30 here but I'm not gonna make that big of a book okay not not one book all right so what you do now that you have your prints okay I like to get out my little scoreboard to help me fold. We're going to fold the paper. Okay. So I don't like to score it because the, the little score lines are never exactly in the right place. Okay. So I'm going to line it up using these edges, you know, to bump up against. You're going to fold color side in. Okay. And you just line it up as best you can. And then you want to reinforce the fold. And I reinforce it again on the desk. Okay, there's your first page. 
And see where we're going with this? All right, I'm gonna set that one over here. Pick up another one. We're gonna do the same thing. And while you're folding, you can be thinking about which way up, you know, which way's up. Okay, so I'm gonna fold that one, line them up, reinforce the fold. And it looks like that would be the right line to follow, but it's not. <laughs> it's not, it was a little off. Okay, there's your second page. Now, here comes the fun part. Okay, here's your pages. Now what are you gonna do? Here comes the back-to-back -back part. Ready? ka -ching! We are going to stick the pages to each other. Okay, that's why we're not worried about what's on the back. We are going to stick the pages together. That's why I call it a back-to-back -back book. Now, I don't know who originally came up with this. I mean, this has been, you know, floating around the world for, you know, a long time, as far as I know, at least 10 years. <laughs> so, because I think it was 2006 when I made one. Anyway, I think we had a swap. I think it was a swap and we made minis. And the minis are here. Yeah, there we go. Were, you know, something along these lines. Um, this one is an, a playing card. So it's ATC size and folded it in half. Okay, and that's just as a little sample. Okay, and then the smaller size. So I don't remember exactly what size I used. I'm thinking it was this size. This is just a little accordion book. It's not even um, done right. It's it was quickly done and it's all wonky. But anyway, um, yeah, this is just a little accordion thing. It's just accordion folded and it's stuck together like this. But if you can see, it's wonky. See, that's why instead of doing an accordion book, I wanted to do it this way. This is much more accurate. Much more accurate. Okay, so let me get a few more done. And uh, I'll put pages together for you. And then I have a book that's already ready to have the binding put on. So I will show you that, but let me get a few more of these done and I'll show you how I manipulate this pages to get them together. And I've done this for a long time and um, Birgit showed this as well. She, she did the tutorial and she showed how to do it as well. And it makes perfect sense. I mean, we've all probably done it. And I really, really love these little scoreboards. I have the big one too. But I love this little guy because he doesn't take you up your whole desk. Okay, I'm gonna do one more. But you can go through this pretty quickly. And you have the music on, which I usually do. I have music on. And you know, you can stack them in order as you go along. Um, that's that's kind of what I like to do. I like to put them in order in the stack. And then as I'm folding, I put them in order. I usually have a little uh, container that I stick them in you know, until they go behind each other, but I don't have that up here right now. I don't even see it, as a matter of fact. It's here someplace. Okay, I may need the bone folder. <clears throat> okay, drink a water called for, excuse me a second. Must have a drink. <laughs> oh, somebody said Diet Dr. Pepper. That sounds good, but I have water. I have water. Okay. So here's all my pages. Okay. That I've got to start with. And uh, make sure you reinforce the folds. Okay. So I will put them in a pile or leave them in the box. I don't even know where that thing went. But let me just, I'm just going to grab this little trash. This is my little um, recycle bin <laughs> for the desktop. Okay. <clears throat> so I uh, take my first page and I determine which way is up. Apparently that way is up. All right. So this is going, the front cover is going to be attached here. Okay. So you can take a little pencil and mark T for top. Okay. So you want on the back side, you want to take your tape runner. Okay. I just have an ATG because I'm used to that from working in Michael's frame shops. Okay. There's just... It's just one of those things. And you want to get as close to the edge as you can and put tape, your double stick tape, all the way around. You can even use a uh, score tape. 
However, I'm going to caution you when you use score tape, uh, the score tape, the adhesive is a little thicker than it is in the ATG or in the tape runners. Okay, so, and I just like to make one across the middle. You don't really need any more than that. So you go all the way around, and there you are. Now, you flip back over here, there's your top. Okay, so you know that you're going to stick the next page to this side. I keep my top to the left. That's just me. All right, pull out the next one. Determine which way is up. Apparently that is. Okay, and I'll mark my little P. Okay, now you want to pick up the page that has the sticky on it. You want to pick up the page that does not. Make sure your top is to the left. Watch where's your little T. Okay, you're going to line them up on the bottom. Approach the bottom first, line them up, and stick it. Okay? It's this easy, folks. You just repeat this till you get as many pages as you want. <laughs> okay? Now, there are some tricks I have, I have found. There are some tricks. The thicker you make the book, the more chance of going wonky you have. So, you want to... Um, Make sure that you're being careful. Don't go too fast. Um, be cautious. Okay, so here's my T. This is still my front. There's the T. All right, adhesive goes here. Okay, so then you go you put your adhesive as close to the edge as you can. If you go over, just bend the adhesive back. That happens sometimes. Try to get close and then it gets wonky that one across. And it doesn't matter which direction you make that one. Now look for your T. There it is right there. Make sure front cover facing down. Okay, here's the next one. Go up, take out your next page and determine which way is up. Apparently that is my T. Okay. T to the left. Match it. Approach it from the bottom. Line it up carefully before you mash. Okay, now, something just happened that I wanted to warn you about. I don't know if you can see it, but that next page is down. Okay, when you are putting these together, now let me see if I can fix it. It's apparently really stuck. Okay, if it's too stuck, it, you know, forget about it, but I think I can get it off. Okay, there it is. All right, so you want to angle this one, okay, uh, toward yourself just a little bit, but not too much. If you do it too much, it's going to get off. So let's try that again and see if I can get it a little bit better. And watch carefully that you don't get it. Oh, here it goes again. See, you get on camera and everything goes wrong. <laughs> it figures, right? It figures. All right. Try to line it up. Okay, there we go. Now I got it. All right, so that it's even. You want this to be even on the top. Okay, now, what what is more important to me is when you're getting it this thick, what's more important to me, since you're going to cover this, this is going to have a cover on it is that this edge is straight. So the edge that's laying on the table is to, oh, sorry, bump the camera, is, is straight. That's what's more important to me because you're going to see all of these edges. You're not going to see these, okay? So it's more important for this edge, the very front edge, the part that you open from is straight to me. Okay, that's what matters to me. All right, so you're going to keep going. So there's my T. And this one I had put a post-it note. So when I was putting them together, my post-it note was over. That marks my top because it, it was hard to see pencil on this. So that's why. But you can do that too if you want. Just put a little post-it there. Oh, we all know how I ended up post-it notes everywhere. I'm getting better about that with bullet journaling. I'm getting better. Okay. So we're going to keep doing this. And as you go, don't get in a hurry. And it doesn't matter if you go this way, this way. It doesn't really matter. You just want one in the middle just to secure it. Okay, where's my T? There's my T. 
that's going there. Next page coming out. Let me see which way's up. Hmm. I guess it doesn't matter. Let's just do it this way. Don't overthink it. Just do it, right? Here's my T. Okay. Next page going over. Going over. Line them up. And of course it's going to get wonky. It figures. Okay, I'm not going to worry about it. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> Don't overthink it. Just do it. Okay. All right, so here's what we have so far. Here's the front. And something else I love about this, I totally love about this. Watch. Here's the book. See how easy it is to turn the pages because when you let go, the next one pops up. See that? Yeah, this one got a little off. See? You can see that it got a little off on the bottom and the top on the next one. You can see there's a little white showing. So that's okay because you can always ink the edges or put on washi tape or whatever because this is a little art journal. You can art in here. You can art on top of your art. Okie dokie. <laughs> Okay, so that's what we do. You just go along and you put all your pages together until you have the book as thick as you want. Now this one is, and they lay flat. Yes, exactly. Isn't that wonderful? I love this. They lay flat and having it this strong, and you can use watercolor paper. You can use Bristol, um, the Strathmore Bristol, which I love for everything. Um, that's my absolute favorite paper. Um, is the I just happen to have oh a pad right here <laughs> the Strathmore Bristol it's smooth surface it takes pen and ink you can do light watercolor on it I just love this paper absolutely love it I also got some Yupo paper guys Yupo so we're playing with Yupo later Yupo and India ink. Oh boy, that's going to be fun. Yes. So anyway, here. So yeah, this is, this book it came out much straighter because I wasn't on camera. <laughs> but see how easy it is to show someone your work. Okay. Isn't this great? I just love it. So much fun. <laughs> and they turn pages all day. Okay, now we're going to talk about the cover, okay, to how to finish the book. So I'm going to move those pages aside. Okay, so what you want to do for the cover, you want to take one of your sheets and cut that in half into the A6. Okay, so here was your full-size book sheet. You cut that exactly in half. One is your front, one is the back. Okay, now you can also do any other kind of cover you want. You don't have to do it exactly this way. You can put um, chipboard. You can cover chipboard. You can paint chipboard. You can use any other hard kind of surface that you want to if you want the cover to be thicker. You can do a double, you know, a double layer. It really doesn't matter because it's, it's you know, pretty sturdy the way, it, you know, the way it is anyway because it's already doubled. So it's pretty, you know, pretty sturdy. So, okay, so here's what we're going to do now. Um, what uh, I had always used was gaffer tape. Um, gaffer tape. Oh, I got, didn't get my gaffer tape out. Okay, hold on. Let me grab the gaffer tape. It's in the uh, tape drawer. <laughs> okay. Here is my gaffer tape. Now you can use this. I use it for book binding. Uh, I use it at shows for um, putting uh, electric cables running. You have to run the electric cables for your printer or your uh, lamps at a show, you know, at an art show. So um, what you want to do is tape, and that's the original use for this is for taping down cables to the floor. This stuff is more or less a fabric tape. It does not leave residue, people. It does not leave residue. Now, we all know and love our duct tape. Yes, okay, we all know and love duct tape. And check this one out. 
Is that cool? That's going to make a great binding. That is so cool. It looks like leather. It's got a slight texture to it, but it's really shiny. So I think I would put a coat of matte medium over this, but that's another project. Anyway, gaffer tape. Okay, I got this at Amazon. Um, you can buy them in the hardware store, you know, any, you know, but it's gaffer tape. Okay. And Pro Gaff is the one I like because it's not too stiff. It's not too stretchy. Um, it is just, just about right for anything. And I will use this on the spine of a book. That is, um, was, and still is my favorite tape. Okay. Now what, um, Birgit Koopsen was using is something called sports tape. Okay. And I found some of this on Amazon, but here it is. And it has, it comes with a backing. Okay. And it's sticky. Uh, it's very sticky. Um, and it's not the easiest thing to cut. You have to really use your scissors to cut it. But once you peel this off and I like to go, no, other way. I like to peel this direction. You peel that corner. See how that came up? You just peel that corner. If you did it the other way around, let me show you. If you did it this way, your corner is going to stick to itself. Okay. Not good. Yeah. You got to do it this way. So the sticky is away and you just use your thumbnail to pull it apart. Very easy. Now, let me show you the characteristics of this stuff. All right. It's stretchy. Okay. See how stretchy it is. It's forgiving. Okay. It is a fabric tape, basically a very stretchy, elasticized fabric tape. Uh, it does seem to have a grain. If you do it sideways, there is no stretch, but long ways, there is a stretch. So it does have a grain. Okay. Uh, this is what I found on Amazon. Where'd the other box go? Here it is. The pink came in a double box, but this is what I found on Amazon. Okay. Somebody go find a link and pop it in there. <laughs> but this is so cool. They have purple, they, you know, it's colors. So I got black, which is basic, a uh, pink for my art, you know, the artwork that's, that's, um, that I'm doing with the jelly, jelly print. And then the white now the white. Okay. Is here. Let me move these. The white is white. Okay. Now the cool thing about the white is what you can do with it. Okay. So, you know, it's white, right? Got the backing on it and everything. Okay. It's white until you art it. <laughs> okay. I put this piece down onto the jelly plate and clean up spots around the edges because I was doing this size on an eight by 10 jelly plate around the edges. There's some paint left. So here's what I did. Now it's not a very good, but it's just a sample. So what I had done with this, I tried stamping on it with paint. It didn't work. This stuff has a texture. Okay. It has a texture. It's woven. See, it's like woven. Okay. It's, it kind of fuzzed on me, but yeah. Okay. So I tried stamping with paint. I tried stamping with stays on ink. Um, it, you know, the, the stays on ink. Um, yeah, it worked, but it was gray. Okay. The inks and the paint came out gray. This stuff just right sort of absorbed up that ink. Okay. And the paint, it just, it didn't come out very well. So stamping is going to be difficult. Um, but I'm thinking that once you get paint on here, then you can stamp. Okay. Or you can use gesso first. Now, where's my gesso? Uh, yeah. Okay. So you can use gesso and it doesn't matter what kind you use. Um, Where's my black? I'm missing my black gesso. Hello. Well, I have some black gesso around here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Hello. <laughs> there we go. So black or white gesso and then art on top of that because that will take away the absorption. Okay. 
So if you could, just like you're doing, um, just like an art page, just like it's an art journal page. Okay. Just, uh, uh, okay. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll have to tweet you guys a link. Let me grab a, a note, post-it note. I need to tweet two things for you guys. Okay. I need to tweet sports tape link. And what was the other thing? The link to, uh, I can't remember. Anyway, I'll remember it. I'll remember it. All right. I'm sticking on the tray. I'll think of it later. Okay. Back to, anyway. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I'll, I'll, um, I'll tweet that link for you guys. So anyway, what I was thinking, Gesso, I haven't actually tried this yet. There's been no time. <laughs> okay. So, um, Gesso your piece first, then you can art on it. That's probably going to be the easiest way to, um, to do it because otherwise it's too, uh, absorbing and all of the, the color, it just absorbs right in there. And you can see this paint absorbed in there too. And you can see that the ink underneath is coming up. And so it made it kind of gray on, on underneath it. So you can kind of, I can see the stamping. I know you guys can't see it, but the stamping I tried to do underneath it, I can still see it. So we need gesso first. That's the first step when you're going to decorate this tape. Gesso. Okay. Uh, on this one, you can use clear gesso. Now I just had that in my hands earlier. There it is. I have a little bottle of clear gesso. So on the color, if you want to decorate the color, put on clear gesso first to get your base, get it coated so it will accept your media. Okay, sit with your stamping or your paint, whatever you're going to do, drawing. I'm going to try drawing and everything. Zentangling on here. Ooh, <laughs> that'll be fun. So there's three types of gesso that can be used to get to get the, your spine uh, decorated so we can decorate this tape. This is very light. I just I just noticed that it's very light. Oh, look, it has a plastic core on the inside. I wonder what we can use that for. Hmm. <laughs> use everything okay so what i'm going to do with this one is just use the black since my art experiment uh had reached its time limit i didn't wasn't able to continue to do what i wanted to on that okay i have to cut this apparently the plastic seal on it and if you save the box it keeps it from unrolling everywhere so I would advise you to save the box. Okay, so we take off the, uh, oh look, it had a pull tab. I did not see that. Look, it has arrows and everything. I didn't see that. So apparently if you tear it, pull the arrow down, it works. Ha, well, future reference. All right, so um, I will experiment more with that kind of thing in, in a bit. All right. Sometime at some point today, I hope. So you want to cut a piece of this longer than what you've got going on here. So you don't have to measure it, just cut it. There's lines you can cut straight across, no big deal. You're not aiming for perfection here. You just want to get a piece cut. It'll be trimmed later. All right, I'm putting that back in the box. Oh, the pink one's starting to unroll, so I guess I'm going to put that back in the box too. See, there's two nested in there. Put that one down. All right, that aside. Okay, I'm going to keep this little sample out because I said I have something else to tell you about them. All right, so, uh, and another thing, remember as you're putting your book together, reinforce the edges. Okay, reinforce the spine edges with the, the bone folder as you go along. Every couple, you know, I would do it again. You do it when you fold it and you do it again when you put it all together. That's going to give you a smoother binding. Okay, that was another tip I forgot. All right, so here is the tape. And you want it longer than what you're going to work with at the moment. So you want to kind of see, okay, where's the center? And you kind of want to center it. Now, I am not going to squish this together and put it on there. I'm not doing that because what that's going to do is cause your book not to open properly. Okay? Your book will not open properly if you squeeze this in. Don't do that. Okay. Do not do that. Don't squeeze. You want to let it 
be itself. Now you've reinforced it with the bone folder and that should be good enough for your pages to turn. If you, if you squished it, if you squished it, uh, your book would not open properly. So let it be itself. Let it relax. Let it be itself. Okay. This will also, because if you squish it, you see what happens if it's squished. It's going to be flat and then you're going to have a, a mini fluffy when you're arting in it. I mean, it may do that anyway, but you don't want it to not open. You want it to open flat, right? So you don't want it to do that. So I can't say that enough. Please do not squish the binding when you put it on the tape. Okay. All right. So here's what I do. All right. Remember the corner. And here's another trick. Okay. Pull it a little bit out. And you have your, uh, you're working on hopefully a non-stick surface. All right, so I turn back about a quarter of an inch, lay it on my non-stick surface. All right. And I've got the, the and it, it doesn't matter at this point which way is which. Um, so you want to hold that. Go ahead and pull this off. When you get to the other end, hold it down a second. You want to take that end, turn it under. Stre don't stretch it much, just stretch it a little bit so it's a little bit taut. Okay, and the trick is getting it off of you. Okay, <laughs> there. Now, once that is stabilized on your surface, and it doesn't matter if it's a little wonky because, like I said, this, this tape is stretchy, it's going to be wonky. We're going to cover up those edges anyway, so it's fine. And it doesn't matter which way you hold it, but you want to center it the best you can. Okay, you want to center it and you just get it, you know, as straight as you can and then you want to put it down. However, before you do that, I almost forgot this step. You want to use some matte medium. I almost forgot. So uh, back up. You want to use matte medium and I've got my glue, glue brush and my water. Okay, over here. And I'm going to grab uh, something to put this matte medium on. I got a piece of wax paper, does it work? Okay, so I want to make sure I don't get that stuck where I don't want it. So you want to use the golden matte medium or Liquitex or whatever your choice is. And you just need a little bit and make sure your brush is spread out so you can pick up the, the matte medium. And you want to put that on your spine. Let it relax, hold it at the bottom. So it let it relax and do what it's going to do. And then you want to put this matte medium well, I'm going to need more than that, aren't I? Okay, a little more, a lot more. It's absorbing it. Okay, so you want to spread that on your pages. This will not only keep the paint that you put on your pages from seeping through, I hope, that's my theory. Um, if you put this on here, it would keep the, the paint from seeping through to the other pages. I'm hoping because um, you're going to seal the edges and then you're also protecting your edges and you're adding a little security to the tape. Okay, and you want to put a little on that side and a little on that side. I mean, the tape is very sticky, but you want this little added bit of security and watch those edges. Try not to get the, the matte medium too close to the edges and that goes in the water that gets folded and put in the trash can so I'm not sticking to it. All right, now you center it on your tape. Okay, here we go. Da, 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 da. Down it goes. And it's relaxed. Okay, now you can take it up off your surface. Whoopsie. Okay, hmm. At least the one end stayed put. Okay, lean back on it. There we go. Now fold it there. Now I can pull it up. There we go. Okay. It takes a little maneuvering and it doesn't matter if it's a little crooked. That's perfectly fine. Okay. And your matte medium, yeah, it will come through there. However, it will dry clear, so it's not a big deal. Yeah. And I didn't get it, you know, totally even, but that's okay. Like I said, we're going to cover this perfectly fine and close the matte medium so I don't spill it. And yes, I'm still using my Dawn detergent bottle for that. So I'm going to trim my tape now. 
and it can always get retrimmed if need be. I'm trying to stay on camera, but still be able to see what I'm doing. Okay. And I'll do the same thing over here. You just trim the tape. Because if you try to line the tape up straight on the bottom, you're going to come out crooked somewhere and you're not going to be happy with it. Okay. A little bit there and a little bit there. These are not the best scissors, but they're kind of old. <laughs> And here's, I've got, I've got them, um, um, this is my scissor holder for the desk. It, um, the tips don't reach the bottom, but see, it just stands free. And I don't even know what this was. I've had it forever. I don't know even what this was, but that holds my scissors. So it doesn't hurt the scissors in the least. And they're right there. <laughs> Easy to grab. Okay. So there is my binding. Okay. And we're going to let that sit a bit, all right? And uh, here's the covers. Now you decide which way your covers go. And you're going to put the tape on the covers. Now this I will use the score tape. Okay, so here's the back and here's the front, all right? Okay. Got my score tape. While well, that's sitting there, being good. I'm going to go ahead and put on the score tape and I can get right to the edge with this tape. Right to the edge. Because this is the cover, it's important that it be close to the edge as possible. And you can cut it, you know, you can, I, I tear mine with my thumbnail and it seems to be pretty straight. You can use a card if you want or your scissors or whatever you got. Okay, so there's the score tape, and I'm gonna put one down. Nope, I'm gonna put two on the cover because we may put elements on the cover. We may put some 3D elements on the cover. I don't know, so I'm gonna be ready. Okay, so that's my back. I think I just had it upside down. I'll fix it again in a minute. Put on the score tape, not to the edge. And we all learned from Kathy Orta King how to hold the score tape. <laughs> I got back into Kathy's class the other day. That was so much fun. Now this is the front, so I definitely want to put more score tape. I want to make sure this puppy doesn't go anywhere no matter what I put on the cover. <laughs> okay, score tape. That's our friend. Okay, I'm going to move this tape gun because I'm going to knock it over. And seriously, I am surprised the tape gun did not run out of sticky. Usually, <laughs> I'm in the middle of a project, it runs out. Okay, so here is my cover, and let me get it set in my head again. Okay, see, I cut it in half, right? Okay, so here's the back. I'm going to put the back on first. Now, here's my top. There's my top. Okay, everything's right side up. Make sure there's text in here. It's right side up the way I want it. All right, so I'm going to put the back on first. So it's going to go like this. Okay, so I'm going to flip it over. Take off the backing, tape backing. That's what I was saying about this score tape. It's the thicker adhesive. And it would just add bulk to your, your book before you even got any art in it. And you don't really want to do that on the inside. Okay, now here comes the tricky part. We're going to line this up. I need to bring it a little closer. We need to line this up. Let me make, double check my top. There's my top. Here's my top. I'm going to start in the corner down here. See how I'm using my fingers? Line that up. Line it up visually and then go. There, got it. <laughs> Okay, if you use that corner trick with your fingers. That is so helpful. And then visually line it up. And there's the back. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing for the front. Okay, I'm going to put this inside so that I still have that, but it's not in the way. 
Okay, I'm gonna, my binding is still out. And here my front's going to go like this. Flip it this way. Take off the tape. My thumbnails are my tools. Thank goodness for healthy nails. <laughs> Oops. Don't want that folded up. I don't want it thick. All right. So this this one is the cover. My bin is down here. All right. Now we're going to use that same corner trick. All right. Line it up. Visually on the edges. Physically feel it. Go. All right. Burnish it down. And there we have our book. Now I don't need the uh, little top thingy now. I don't need the little marker. I'll use that again for something else. All right. This isn't quite dry, but that's okay. It's not going to hurt anything because our main purpose for having that matte medium is to seal the folded edges of our book. Okay, so there we go. I've been making books a long time, and this has to be one of my very favorite ways to make a book. I totally forgotten about these. Totally forgotten. But this is just, uh, I mean, it's just, uh, I love it. It is just, and you don't have to worry about stitching. You don't have to worry about anything in the middle. I mean, this is just so much fun. But there is the back-to-back -back book. That's what I'm calling it. it. I don't know if it has a name. Other than this, I don't know. But this is what I'm calling it, the back-to-back -back book. And you can decorate your spine even once you're done. You can, you know, glue stuff onto it if you want, um, like trim or ribbon or, you know, put a dangly, whatever you want. I don't usually do that if I'm actually arting in the book. I'll do the cover last. You know, it's just, yeah. So, ta-da! There it is. <laughs> so now you know what to do with your jelly prints. So, <laughs> yeah, so now I'm going to continue. So you can, you know, uh, paint the edges, ink the edges, you know, whatever you're going to do to your pages. This is a mini art journal. And it's a perfect size to fit in a pocket, in a purse, in a... Um, what do you call it? Um, what do I want to say? Um, oh, anyway, it's a pocket size. Okay, so the the dimensions are four and a quarter by five and a half, and or a six. Okay, so if you're in the UK, you're using UK sized paper. It's an a. It's going to be an a six. And I didn't know about that that paper trick. That was kind of cool. I have to show you all that again. Let me do it right this time. Let me fold it. Let me do it right this time. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Start out with, and, it, and of course, here in the U.S., it's a standard 8.5 by 11. I don't know what the measurements are for the U.K., but they call it A4. All right. You're going to fold that in half. You have an A5. You fold that in half. You have an A6. Okay. Now, I, when I just folded them, these things came up the right way. That was a, an accident um, when I was doing it because it was just real quick. But worked out pretty well for showing you guys. So, hey, maybe you'll remember now what the sizes are because I always forget. So I'm back to back book. There you go. And, you know, I've already got an idea for this page here. So I have some. I'm going to make a little house. And here's the little people. And uh, these are the Tim Holtz, um, I don't know what you call them, paper dolls? Is that right? Paper dolls? Yeah, probably. But there's a whole slew of these little rascals. They filled up my little iris box. But they're, and they're all sizes, and there's all kinds of little people in there. Oh, and something, something that was kind of fun. I took uh, banker's clips, because I'm was i um, I'm working on a diorama. All right. And... That's kind of a 3D shadow box kind of thing. Okay, anyway, um, I took the banker's clips 
and so they can stand up. I think they're standing up. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. They're standing up. Okay, so I tell you what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to uh, stop the recording and make that part one because I want to show you something else. I'm going to have time, so I want to show you something else. I've only been on an hour. Yeah? Okay, good. So I'm going to show you something else. Anyway, so I've already got a page in progress in this one. This is going to be um, more calm art. You know, more of an elegant kind of book. Okay, so yeah, but the scrapbook paper. But anyway, yeah. So that's going to be loads of fun. All right. Um, okay, let me go ahead and stop the recording and start again. All right. Uh, it'll just be easier for YouTube. Um, okay, if you guys are on YouTube, thanks for watching. Um, be sure and watch part two, which is coming up if you're watching me live.